On this episode, I talk about Bray Wyatt's face turn being imminent and his WrestleMania 33 title match in uncertainty. I also talk about Tom Phillips and some hot water and what needs to be changed about Monday Night Raw. All that and more right here on the Sunday Night Heat. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode 8 of the Sunday Night Heat on the Old Spark Wrestling Podcast. The show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses and or rants about trending topics in the WWE. You can follow the show or the podcast on Twitter at NoHoldsBarredWP and join in the conversation by tweeting using the hashtag TSNH. You can follow the podcast itself on Twitter or on YouTube and, you know, just subscribe to us. Follow us. Do what you got to do on YouTube, Spreaker, and iTunes now. And today's episode is called Monday Night Raw. What needs to be changed? Ladies and gentlemen, what does need to be changed for Monday Night Raw? We'll get into that today. A lot to talk about. Um, we're also going to talk about Tom Phillips and the hot water he's in, as you guys are all aware by now, hopefully. And we'll talk about Bray Wyatt a little bit. Uh, I've been hearing some stuff about Bray Wyatt, so we'll see how that goes. So let's jump into it. Sunday Night Heat. We'll talk about some Tom Phillips news here. And if you don't know, uh, Tom Tom Phillips has been allegedly been caught in some sort of uh, some sort of online affair. We'll title it that. Uh, photos have surfaced up on Instagram of this supposed girl he's in an affair with of Tom's conversation, or his text conversation on uh, iPhone. The conversation goes as this. There's an awkward picture of Tom's face up close. Looks like he's on the airplane. And he says, I'm in my seat with a massive erection and a four-hour flight ahead. I'm going to face fuck the shit out of you. Yes, very vulgar by Mr. Tom Phillips. <laughs> wow. When I first seen this, I'm like, no, this has got to be fake. But we know we don't we never know, guys. So, you know, people are messed up out there. Um, people can do weird stuff with celebrities, so we'll see what happens with Mr. Tom Phillips. Um but yeah, this is crazy. I can't. I can't believe I actually seen that. And uh, according to reports, the woman uh, said over a Twitter message to I'm not sure who, but she said she had no idea that Tom Phillips was a WWE commentator, and that he was alleged or already married, um, or engaged. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I think a lot of people just say that to protect their ass, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I don't know how WWE is gonna take this. Um, we see what they've done with uh, not similar situations, but simulations that are this bad before. They fired people. They've kept people. Who knows what they're gonna do? I guess it all depends on the relationship they have with Tom Phillips and how much they need him. I mean, he's kind of useless right now. He's a good backstage role person in my books, but uh, him on that the fourth member in that SmackDown commentary team is too much. I mean, if they do fire him, you know, I'll wish him well in his uh, future endeavors there. But. Uh, if they don't, I mean, I think you should literally take him off commentary. I think that's the fair thing to do. I don't know what you guys think out there, but I do think that uh, Tom Phillips should be taken off. Um, I mean, he's privatized all his accounts now on, on social media, so I don't know what's going to happen with him. So we'll update you guys on the Lowdown Show this coming week if we hear anything about that. Um, so that's it for Tom Phillips. Let me stop talking about that. Let's get into the main topic of the show, and is I told you guys what needs to be changed about Raw, and I asked you guys out there uh, what you guys think, and I'm going to get into your tweets right now. So let's get into them. Uh, we'll start off with the relevance at Forlorn. He puts, Raw, what Raw always needs was to be simple, or needed was simple, meaning, meaning behind its divisions, uh, meaning behind why we cheer and why we should boo, if there's effort, then there is meaning. But since this is the best WWE has ever done, there's no effort behind things. For there, for there to be meaning behind Raw would result in negative means. Drop in the money slash buys and heavy drop in views. A positive way of change would be to change the direction and staff simple. Uh, most know the answer to that. And <laughs> I got to play for him since the... Uh, he used the hashtag here, and the answer to that would be... Oh, God, I can't believe I, I always agree to play that when you guys do that. I don't know, it gets me. But thank you, Relevance, and I do definitely agree with you, and I see where you're coming from there. It, it's tough to, uh, to change Monday Night Raw. We'll get into that with my uh, ideas and theories. Uh, next set of tweets comes from Luke Tonkinson. 
at Laughing Shovel. They should get rid of the last hour or offload the shit and hire some credible talent. <laughs> Shake up commentary. No coal, no tonga. Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, they got, should get rid of that last hour. Definitely agree with you there. Um, Commentary-wise, yeah, we should shake it up a bit, I think. Um, some of the people there are already, but Cole, I think, is going to be uh, phasing out soon. No, Tonga is useless. I agree with you there. So thank you, Luke Tonkinson, for those tweets. Next set of tweets, Michael Chow. Where do I begin with Raw? Okay, first, if you're staying at three hours, then make use of the time. More cruiserweights and less Roman appearances. 100% agree with that. Since they have 205 Live on Raw, have their cruiserweights wrestle the main roster. TJP vs. Reigns, Cedric Owens, Kendrick Sammy. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. That's a good idea. Huh, that's very interesting. I never thought of that. Thank you, Michael Chow. Chow puts, end Charlotte's streak. It's destroying the women's division. I don't care who does it. Sasha, Bailey, or even Nia. End it at Mania, please. I really hope it ends there, too. And I, Thanks for that gif for Charlotte slapping Paige. Always love that gif. Damn you, Michael Chow. <laughs> Michael Chow then puts, turn Roman heel. How hard is that? What's bad about Raw seeing them try to make him top babyface or having job to him? Or having everyone job to him? Yeah, you know what? I agree with you there, Michael Chow. I think... Roman Reigns going heel would definitely be a benefit for it, and it'd be interesting. It'd just be very, very interesting. So thank you for the tweets there. Next tweets, Tyler Jones at Tyler Jones 22. Number one, he puts, oh, God, stop letting Vince and the Beaver run the show. <laughs> the Beaver <laughs> run the show. And if you guys don't know who the Beaver is, it's uh, Mr. Kevin Dunn back there, the producer. Stop killing the women's division. Let Charlotte dominate. Let HHH run it. Yes, I definitely agree. NXT is awesome. Imagine that. For three hours. It'd be fucking awesome. Let the guys talk. Yes. Yes. I definitely agree with you there. Tyler Jones. Um, Triple H running the show would definitely be a benefit. I mean, uh, Kevin Dunn and Vince just don't know what it takes to produce a good show anymore, man. It's crazy. Next set of tweets. Glorious Greg. He puts, in order to fix Raw, no man gains. Can't be the center of attention every week. I definitely agree with you there. And also, Stephanie shouldn't be in every segment. There's too much reliance on the authority figures, and they all also need to book everything better. Yes, there's so much authority, especially Raw. The authority figures are always out in the spotlight, man. It's terrible. Um, the show should not be playing hot potato with the women's title. And yeah, we all know my thoughts on that. And the Cruiserweight should get more TV time. Yes, definitely agree, but I don't think they should be getting TV time on Raw. They need their own show, as I've said before. It would make more sense. Um, the show needs a lot of work, but it can be fixed if Vince stops trying to control every week and they need to stop depending on part timers all the time. That's another thing wrong with hashtag raw. Yes. Part timers need to just relax a bit. Let the spotlight go over some new talent. You're never going to have future part timers. If you don't make the superstars now, I talk about this all the time. So Next set of tweets, Colin at Gamma NU1 puts number one is for USA and networks. Then for WWE, use the first hour for something else. If it has to be WWE related, I say heat. Oh. Raw is an hour less. We have heat back. They'd probably fuck that up, though. <laughs> uh, I agree with you there. Two, drop the Roman Reigns bullshit and don't let Goldberg slash part-timers win the damn title. Yep, another... Uh, Almost same tweet there, but yeah, I agree. The part-timers need to go again. They won't do that, Colin says. Probably not. Um, finally, Vince retires and HHH takes over. We'll have to wait a long time for that, though. <laughs> Glory's great, but it'll be centuries before that happens. Uh, Colin's idea for he would be taking would be like talking smack slash raw mixed uh, with that with that sports news type of show they had. And obviously two to three matches with mid-card talent from or stars from NXT. Oh, that's a really good idea, Colin. Bring it to the table. Okay, that's the show you was talking about. Yeah, they, they should do something like that. I think I agree. Um, it, I think the trouble with that is you're going to want people to get tuned in. So you're going to have to do something. Maybe that will be the hour where they feature 205 Live and some NXT matches. If, you're, if you want to promote... I, I like that idea. If you want to promote NXT and... 205 Live, you ha have the first hour of Raw be solely towards them. 
have an NXT promo match here and there, maybe have two 205 matches, and do that kind of talking smack, uh, bring it to the table thing in between. I like that idea. I think it's a really good idea. Whether it be does it in the future, you know, that's they have different creative minds than we do. Um, I think I have one more tweet here from somebody. Yes, who trans Superman? But it's mostly just sad. The wrong woman had to drop her title. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I do agree that both of them should have dropped it this week. Um, Naomi didn't deserve to drop it, but you know, injury is another story. And if she has to drop it, she had to drop it. I know it sucks that she had to because all of a sudden they bring back the 30-day rule. And it's unfortunate because, you know, who the hell actually remembered that before they mentioned it the, uh, last week on SmackDown. So, anyways, let's get into my thoughts and uh, what I think should be done to change Monday Night Raw. So, start off with the runtime. It needs to go from three hours to two hours. Less commercials and filler. This would be better for the product when it's two hours long. I think that won't happen, though, until the current contract for the three-hour show is over, which is sometime in 2019. So we're stuck with three hours till 2019, ladies and gentlemen. So just bear with it. Um, I would only give TV time to people who, to things that actually would want the fans to see, if I can word that right. Um, and give it to talent that are actually being pushed properly. If there's nothing for you, don't be shown on the two hours. Go into superstars or main event and have a kind of a side match there. Um, you might need to trim the roster a little bit. Uh, maybe send some people down to NXT for some revamping. So, you know, that's what my idea would be uh, from three to two hours. Another thing you need to change about Monday Night Raw is the women's division. It needs a complete overhaul. It needs to be completely revamped. Um, you need some sort of actual creative direction because there's absolutely none right now. Like, absolutely none. The women's division on Raw is worse than the Divas division in 2010 during the PG era. It's getting to that level. Um, the women just sound like robots reading cue cards out there. They're not given enough direction with their storylines. So, you know what? I, I think they need to be let loose and a little bit of uh, creative freedom when it comes to their... Uh, their scripts. Um, you need some more women, obviously. Um, I hear they're talking to Victoria. I think Victoria would be a good boost for that Raw division. You can bring up Liv Morgan and Peyton Royce. I see them being more Raw-type divas or women. I think they would do good in that division as well. And no more. M most importantly, no more hot potato belt. Stop that. That's got to stop. It's, making, it's losing credentials. And it's losing credibility of that title, man. It's just terrible. You debuted it last year, and you're already ruining it. So... It needs to get, you know, stop being changed hands every other week. Uh, stop with the Charlotte losing on Raw and only at pay-per-views. I really don't get that. You make her look, you can't make her look dominant. And, and they try to perceive her as this dominant force in pay-per-views when she loses every single Raw match. It doesn't make any sense. Um, turn Sasha heel. That's another thing. They need to turn Sasha Banks heel. She's a better heel than the face. She's terrible as a face. Um... I, I, I don't like her as a face. I don't think Corporate Cappy loves her as a face either. Um, he loves her more as a heel. And he's a, the biggest Sasha Banks fan I know. So, uh, no more Nia Jax jobber matches or any kind of diva jobber matches. They really make no sense. Um, they don't make her look dominant. It just makes her look really useless. If you're going to make her look dominant, have her squash main, main roster people. Have her go through the roster. It just... It just you can't just have local jobbers. No one gives a shit. Like, literally, no one cares. Um, Dana Brooke sent down to the Performance Center or something, man. She botches way, way too much. Look what she did this week. She barely ran to the ring. Like, like she's really bad, man. I don't know what to do with Dana Botch. I thought she was going to be better than this when she debuted in WWE. So, we'll see what we do with her. But I will put her in the Performance Center. That's just me. Uh, and you need more than one more. One feud. Sorry. One feud. They need more than that. SmackDown's got three. Raw's only got one. You need more feuds. Branch out. Make the division watchable. So that's what I do for the women's division for Raw. Uh, another thing I would change is Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. They need to step back a bit, man. I don't think they know what makes good a, pro a good product anymore. They're so stuck in the past, especially Vince. He loves his part-timers. He needs to get over that hump. Um... Maybe let the SmackDown creative team take control a little bit, man, because they seem to be doing wonders over there. 
Raw is just so bland, it's boring, it makes you fall asleep in the middle of the show or even at the beginning of the show. They only focus on Roman Reigns or Braun Strowman all goddamn show. I'm pretty sure there's more than two people on the roster. Triple H would be good for taking over. I agree with all you got out there that said that. It would be a blessing for him to take over Raw. The stuff he's done with uh, NXT is just insane. So... Triple H taking over would be a huge benefit for Monday Night Raw. I definitely agree with all, all out there, and I think so as well. Um, moving on. Another thing I changed about Raw, let's go through some, uh, some trades here. So I got uh, six trades here that I would do, and I'll explain each one of them. Uh, first one, Sami Zayn for The Miz. I think Sami Zayn would benefit more on SmackDown. Looks like he'd have more creative uh, control over there and a better direction into a feud. He's got nothing on Raw. He just keeps getting buried, so... Sami Zayn for Miz would make sense. Miz coming over to Raw. He can feud for the United States Championship somehow or put him into that. Um, I don't know what else you do with him, but I don't know. I think Miz is just more of a Raw superstar in my books. Um, another trade I do, I would send Rusev over to SmackDown for Dolph Ziggler. Uh, I think Rusev could be a really good SmackDown superstar, really dominant force over there. Like, what is he doing on Raw? He's teaming with Jinder Mahal and doing this stupid, uh, handsome Rusev gimmick. Literally, it's funny. Stuff he says, it's funny, and, you know, we, we can't get enough of Lana. You can't make fun of Lana. But, like, Rusev needs some more creative direction because right now he's got nothing. He's got no feuds. I think he would benefit for something good on uh, SmackDown. Uh, another trade I would do, and it, it, it doesn't make sense because it would never happen, but I would trade Brock Lesnar for Kalisto. Uh, so I put Kalisto on, uh, on Raw uh, to bring uh, the Lucha Dragons back, team up with Sin Cara, and that way you have an, uh, another good tag team for that tag team division that needs some uh, a boost, basically needs a boost on Raw. Brock Lesnar over to SmackDown, you can make him a top superstar there and a top dominant force on SmackDown, and you can really put over a lot of, uh, of talent up there or on SmackDown. So Brock Lesnar on SmackDown would be a pretty good uh, story, even him returning to SmackDown where he started out. So uh, The club for the Ascension... I think you can bring the club over to SmackDown, get the club back together with AJ Styles again and be a dominant force over there. Um, yeah, I think the Ascension could benefit from coming to Raw too if they do it the right way. I think they should bring him over to Raw and make him look dominant, challenge for the titles. Ascension versus Cesaro and Sheamus would be a pretty good feud in my books. I think they can do a lot with that. You just need to have put more creative planning with the Ascension and I think they could be a dominant force in the tag team division, especially on Raws. Um, a woman's trade I would do is I would trade Sasha Banks for Nikki Bella. Uh, I know Nikki Bella and John Cena want to be together in the same show, but this would just benefit the women's division. Sasha Banks could be a huge boost over to the SmackDown women's division. And an Alexa Bliss for Sasha feud would be amazing and the best thing for SmackDown uh, since the brand split. Nikki Bella on Raw could be pretty good. You can have uh, a Nikki Bella and Charlotte feud. That'd be pretty good. I'd love to see that. Um... So, yeah, that'd be a good women's trade in my books. And lastly but not least, I would trade Finn Balor for Dean Ambrose. I think Finn Balor would be a great add to SmackDown. And, you know, no, you can do something with the club again. Or you can have Finn Balor go revolt against the club and have uh, two members of his own over there. Who knows? But uh, I like uh, Finn Balor going over to SmackDown. And Dean Ambrose coming over to Raw and maybe doing a Shield reunion. Something to do with Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns right now, man. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens there. They got that whole NXT invasion thing going on, and what better way than to reform the Shield? They're all babyface right now. So that'd be the last trade, and those are all the trades I would do in my books to fix Raw. Um, cruiserweights uh, need to get off of Raw, in my opinion. They don't just not, don't be on Raw anymore. They're completely useless. I don't find them useful at all for Monday Night Raw. They don't promote 205 Live whatsoever. They're just useless. No one cares about them on Raw. They just need to get off. They need to have their own show. I'm thinking on Wednesdays before NXT. You get more network subs that way because both shows are network exclusives. And that way, you have a third day of the week of wrestling. Um, and Wednesdays would be definitely my favorite in my books because then I get to watch Shufi Live followed by NXT. And then you can do all the tapings together. So I think that would do wonders for the 205 live division and, and to have its own show and full sale university would be awesome because i think they definitely benefit from the crowd there and it's a better way to get people over because some crowds they go to when they're on raw or on smackdown it, it, some crowds are just asleep or they just don't know or don't care um they do nothing for raw they're just used as filler um they they only get up to 10 minutes or less in total 
a night on a three-hour show. So, again, they're just completely useless on Monday Night Raw. Uh, last but not least, okay, stop looking like a complete clusterfuck in Dumpster Fire Monday Night Raw. Some nights, I swear to God, it's like they take their program list, cut it into pieces, and then throw it into a hat, and whatever falls first is what they put out there. Because it, sometimes it doesn't make sense. There's no direction in anything. SmackDown is just more fluid, and it has a better flow to it. I think they need to go in that direction that SmackDown has. I know it's it's hard when SmackDown is only a two-hour show, but it just looks clusterfuck some weeks for Monday Night Raw. And you got to stop making it look being bad because it's pissing a lot of people off, and it's getting unwatchable to a point. So those are my ideas and my things that I would do to change Monday Night Raw. And thank you for your responses out there, ladies and gentlemen. I do appreciate them. And you guys have a lot of good ideas. I like them. So we'll move on to the last part of the Sunday Night Heat. We'll talk about Bray Wyatt and WrestleMania 33. So, so far, so so far we know Orton's going to give up his spot. So, quote unquote, give up his spot to either Harper or Styles. And looking like most, most likely Harper this coming uh, Tuesday on SmackDown in the number one contenders match. Um, current plans right now are for Wyatt to drop the monster heel gimmick. Okay, not his gimmick, but just drop the monster heel act and become a full baby face. According to reports, WWE is making the WWE picture at WrestleMania very uncertain on purpose. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, and according to other reports, plans are for a double turn to happen between Bray Wyatt and Orton, which would make Orton a full heel and Bray Wyatt a full face. There's also reports that a Wyatt family reunion could happen with Eric Rowan almost ready to come back from injury from the Performance Center. So we can might see a, uh, a Wyatt family reunion. That'd be interesting. Uh, reports are saying that Wyatt uh, could not change his style and just continue to do it challenging heels instead so he won't change his gimmick he'll change his uh he's the face now and he'll just challenge the heels instead of challenging the faces if you guys know what i mean um so i like that uh idea uh jim ross ross not jim roth jim ross good old jr believes that this is a strategic move by the wb and loves it and thinks that bray could be one of the great uh one of the greats when the time comes, so in the future. Uh, it gives Bray some high praises. So that's good for your JR to give uh, high praises to a guy like that. And he deserves it. Bray Wyatt is definitely uh, definitely in the works to being something great. I think it would be unreal. Uh, Bray turning face could send him into the next level. That would be interesting to see what he does as a face. Um, he's getting a huge reaction now as a champion. And... This could be the opportunity that Darby has been looking for for making him the next face of fear. If this happens and he gets more of a reaction, he continues to be champion after WrestleMania, Bray Wyatt, this could have sent him into the face of fear, what they were trying to do. Darby was trying to make him the face of fear when they first debuted the Bray Wyatt gimmick. So I think this would be a good idea, and I like the direction this is going to. Orton going heel, though, I'm not sure if it's going to last. The crowd, he's more of a tweener because the crowd literally... They, when he's heel, they want to be face. And when he's face, they want to be heel. The guy just gets a reaction, opposite reaction, no matter what. So it's going to be interesting to see how long of a heel, if he does go heel, and how long he will last. Um, other than that, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, guys. I'm really, really, really excited to see what happens um, with the whole Bray Wyatt and Orton thing. Uh, lots of people were pissed off about the Battle Royal and the ending of it. But you know what? SmackDown did the right thing. There's six weeks till WrestleMania. It gives the opportunity that uh, that makes sense. And it gives the uncertainty that makes sense. And it gives the opportunity for the storyline to drag out until WrestleMania instead of... Well, not drag out. Drag out the, the, the best way. Not like you already know who the number one contender is now. And then you have to think of five weeks to create it. Um... I just think it's perfect storytelling, uh, and they did a really good job last week, and now they're doing a really good job this Tuesday. I can't wait to see what happens. A lot of rumors coming out of that. Um, you keep the audience watching every week this way, so it's a really smart idea, unlike Raw. Uh, still think Randy Orton will turn maybe the week after WrestleMania. I think if they're going to do the whole double turn, it's going to be the the SmackDown right before WrestleMania. That's just my opinion. Um, I think Shane McMahon this Tuesday is going to somehow screw AJ 
out of the match, uh, setting up their WrestleMania match. But, but, there's an idea that I want to go through that our boy JD from NY said. He said, uh, before the match even starts, you have someone, you have Shane come out and say the match is not going to happen. He declares Harper the winner of the Battle Royal from looking at different angles. AJ's pissed and starts to kick the shit out of Shane. Um... I love that idea, and he thinks that maybe like John Cena comes out for the save. But you know what? I'd scratch it right there. My idea at this point, I like that idea up to where AJ Styles is beating up Shane around the ring. I think someone else should come out for the save to save Shane McMahon, but that guy has to wrestle AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Now, there's two names. One, Kurt Angle, recent inductee into the Hall of Fame, looking to get back to wrestle in the WWE, wants to wrestle AJ Styles, and that'd be a really good match. Or... You don't have Kurt come out, and you have the current rumor of Shinsuke Nakamura. A lot of lots and lots of chatter about saying that Nakamura will finally debut on Tuesday and challenge Styles at WrestleMania. That would be insane. It would be a rematch from the Wrestle Kingdom 10 match. I think it was 10 or 9. Their, uh, their 10 match together, that would be insane. That would be incredible. I'd love to see Shinsuke against uh, Styles. That would be really, really great. Um, but who knows? who knows what will happen, guys. Um, we'll have to see what happens with that. But yeah, I mean, Styles needs a WrestleMania match, and versus Nakamura would be sick. Um, there's another man that needs a WrestleMania match that you want to talk about right now. Uh, that I think needs a WrestleMania match, and it's gonna be—it's all up the air right now. And he's coming back, Finn Balor. And he's returning. He's got a uh, live event set up in March. And the rumor right now, apparently, I heard around Finn Balor, is that he's set to be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I don't know if that even makes sense. Or he's facing Braun Strowman. I really hope to God he doesn't face Braun Strowman at WrestleMania because that's the worst idea imaginable. Um, you know, I got some ideas for Finn Balor. I think, one, he could go against Undertaker. I mean, if you you know Roman Reigns and Undertaker are set to face each other. But here you go. Have Roman get the fuck out of that match. Put him in the Andre the Giant Mo- Memorial Battle Royal. You can even have him win, Vince. You can have Roman win that. I don't give a shit if he wins that. Cool. Good for Roman Reigns. Balor versus Taker would be epic. It would definitely be a show stealer. The entrances alone would steal the show, I think. Can you imagine their entrances at WrestleMania? That'd be insane. Both those guys would put up unreal entrances. Uh, it would be an unreal match as well. I think Takers can do a good job of putting Finn Balor over, Finn Balor over, and vice versa. Even if Balor loses, I still would be okay with it, and it's, he still look credible. I I definitely agree with Balor versus Taker. I think that'd be incredible. Um, I think Balor or or could face Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn has no match for WrestleMania. Okay, why not do this? Would be probably match of the night. I think. Both these guys could put up a good match. It could be a mutual thing. You don't need a feud. Just a mutual agreeing to a match with each other at WrestleMania. Face versus face. That'd be great. Or you can do Balor versus Joe. You know, that'd be great. Why not? Have Triple H and uh, uh, Samoa Joe come out to the ring. Talk about how Rollins is being put on the shelf for WrestleMania. Looks like those are the current reports. Um, And have Balor come out and take his place. Rekindle that NXT feud these guys just had. And it would be a great storyline. I like that idea. Or, you know what last idea I just thought of? Have a a cross-branded match. An inter-promotional match. Finn Balor versus AJ Styles. Can you imagine that? Finn Balor versus AJ Styles would be an insane match. That'd be great. Oh my god, I would love that match. I would love to see that match. So, those are ideas for me for uh, Finn Balor. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. I'd like to hear them out there. But I think that's going to wrap it up, guys, for the Sunday Night Heat. Thank you for your tweets, as always. And get ready for the Lowdown Show this week. Uh, make sure you get your tweets in. I'll send out the mass tweet on Wednesday for you to send me your thoughts and all that stuff. But other than that, guys, that is going to wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat episode number eight on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. The show where myself, Kyle Masters, discusses and or rants about training topics in WWE. Remember, you can follow the podcast itself on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. And join the conversation on this show by using the hashtag TSNH. You can follow the podcast itself on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. And you can follow us on YouTube as well. Subscribe to us on there. We're also available on iTunes for you guys. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you. That's going to do it for today's show, guys. I'm Kyle Masters. Stay fired up, y'all.